I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm preparing to go and preach in one big church in this city. Uh, when the BBC interview of T.B. Joshua came out, I did not go to defend T.B. Joshua, but I made the statement that most of those they interviewed were those who had left T.B. Joshua's ministry, were those who were angry with the system. And I said categorically that after T.B. Joshua, they will start facing Papa Adeboye, Oyedebo, Chris Oyakilome, and other ministers of the gospel. And yesterday night, I was watching a lady I don't know which country she is now, but she is a Yoruba lady, a former member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, whose husband died as a pastor while they were serving under the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And she was using the incidents that happened recently to buttress her point. And she made a lot of allegations or criticisms. She spoke Yoruba mostly. And then another Yoruba lady interpreted what was she was saying in English. And the things she said included the following. Number one, that the branches of Redeem are opened like a franchise that given a certain amount of money, which she said was peanuts, quite small, you can't open your branch. And that most of those who were ordained to become pastors might not have been called, but they were those who had means to run these churches. And that they were given quotas to meet financial quotas, numerical quotas. And that the rapid expansion process of a five-minute drive or walk for every branch of Redeem puts the pastors under enormous pressure. She sort of alluded that her husband had died of pressure and that there are many people like that under pressure. And that she said that the fruit of the womb that she got, that she had to say she got it from the prayers of Papa Adeboye, because that is the way their minds have been conditioned. And she said so many other things that the space of this video will not be enough for. I want to state categorically that there is no perfect system and there is no perfect human being. The United States or the UK where she is, is not a perfect system. Most churches also are run by imperfect people that Christ is perfecting. There was war in heaven and Satan rebelled. Even in the, among the disciples of Christ, there was a lot of contention, disagreement, denial, theft, and misbehavior. So even only 12 disciples, Christ did not maintain a perfect organization. But one thing I didn't like was the way members of the Redeemed Christian Church of God on social media were trying to hack her account, stifle her voice, abuse her, call her an antichrist. And then uh, I found out that she too was grieved in her spirit and she was airing some of these things out of bitterness. Now, let's take these things and make them clear. Number one, as a man of God, don't superimpose your image over the people so that they don't see Christ. That's what is happening in today's ministry in Nigeria. We, the general, the, the general overseers, 
and men of God like Dr. Apoki, we try to put our imagery bigger than Christ. And so the people look at us, instead of looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We tend to attract them to ourselves by sharing testimonies. Even in trying to share these testimonies, some of them have this braggadocio attitude. Some of them have this humility attitude. But in all, the minds of the people are focused on the miraculous through the man of God. And then, if they not derive their relevance and promotion and whatever from association with the man of God, they tend to please the man of God in sharing their testimonies, even if he himself did not tell them to do that. So, most Nigerians in church don't think. They don't think for themselves. They are just echoes of those they admire. And the reason this admiration comes is because there's so much poverty in the land. So when you display the following S's, number one, statistics, you display structures, you display the dollar sign, that is wealth, financial, oh, the people will believe anything you say. And so they don't focus on Christ. Now, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That is, if Paul is no longer following Christ, shift from Paul and follow Christ. So, she talked about first fruits. First fruits is an Old Testament practice. So, if you carry your whole salary and go and give to an organization, that is your fault. You as an adult should have read the Bible and understood the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament, the sociology and the spirituality. If you gave your first salary, that is your fault. You should have learned to think for yourself. If you refuse to go for treatment because that the Jew said that uh, he doesn't fall sick, so to fall sick is as if you are defective, that is your fault. The Bible says um, he who is sick has need for a physician. Most Nigerian Christians, and I'm categorically about it, they don't read the Bible on their own. When they read the Bible, they suffer from scriptural indigestion. I made a short video of how I left my wife. They could not watch it to the end before they started thinking that I divorced my wife. And they started attacking me. So the average Christian goes to church to hear stories and testimonies of men of God. And then they just go home with these meals. It's like feeding children a baby who is supposed to be sucking breast. It's like giving him bone, giving him meat instead of drinking milk. So a lot of these immature Christians just run with testimonies and uh, principles and philosophies without digesting them. So you see them, they dress like the man of God, they dance like the man of God, they talk like the man of God without having their own relationship, personal relationship with Christ. There were two types of miracles in the Bible. One, that of the, issue, the man, the woman with the issue of blood, that she got in contact with Jesus Christ and had a personal experience. She determined her healing by believing in Christ. And then there were the ones Jesus prayed for. We, as men of God, we should try as much as possible, allow people experience the miraculous with Christ on their own. A Muslim came to my hospital, then at Abana, he was, during Ramadan, he was having hiccup, and then he had an ulcer. I gave him mismatch trisilicate, then the hiccup was still there. And I prayed for him, and the hiccup stopped. And his brother started crying. In his mind, an infidel, in quotes, had prayed for his brother, or his brother had lost his faith. I called him, why are you crying? Then I explained to him, I said, go home. You will see Isa come to talk to you this night. The next morning, Isa is Jesus. The next morning, he was the one that ran to the hospital and was telling my nurses, 
Allah, I see him, I see him, I see him. He had a personal encounter. When we told him about becoming a Christian, he said they would kill him if he denied Islam and became a Christian. I left him, but he had a personal encounter. Let's allow our people be like Theophilus that said the things we have, I mean, look, that wrote to Theophilus, the things we have seen with our hands, the things we have felt, let us, let them know Christ. The next thing is that we are so much in a hurry to grow our denominations so that the process of discipleship, mentorship, and development of individuals as Christians is in a hurry, it's like mass production Christianity. So we are producing this product, these Christians who are looking unto us for solution to their problems, looking unto us for relevance in life through ministry, who are looking unto us for their prosperity, who are looking unto us to see Christ. The resultant effect is that if they don't see that true man, they become angry. These are things we should learn. And the solution is not, when you cage people, there's a recent policy in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. They contacted me from Lagos so that I should come and speak to them, some of them. I told them that, go and confirm from your general overseer, your regional overseer, that there is a new policy that outsiders should not come and preach in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And the young, the pastor went and confirmed and told me it was true. I said, so leave it out. Now, before now, you could cage people in your denomination. Tell them, don't watch television. Tell them, don't. But the people have access to phones and satellite TV. So you can't really cage them. So don't behave like emperors. Don't behave like uh, tyrants, the word, over the people. They will get free. And when they get free, they will be angry. But let me talk to those people who have left the redeemed Christian Church of God. Don't destroy a system, no matter how imperfect it is, by rubbishing the leadership and rubbishing the church. It will pre there are so many unbelievers outside that are looking for which church to attend. They want to, they want to know Christ. They want to know Christ, that they may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. But when we, we, we spread this kind of uh, anger, people will be discouraged from becoming Christians, like as it has happened in the UK, and uh, most of Europe, and Australia, and the United States. In fact, the United States, they are gradually corroding every prominent preacher looking for his faults. And we preachers, we should not put money in front we should not put size of denomination in front. We should not put um, structures in front. We should not think about how big the building is. This phone I have here, I have so many members reaching me from all over the world. I came to this hotel in the reception. They knew me. I was to board a, a public transport to come to this city. In the motor park, the, the person loading the vehicles knew me. So only this phone. You don't need these big structures really as at now if it is humanity you want to really reach. And then we should remove the concept of as if it is a family business. But for those of you who have left, don't behave like ex-lovers. I'm always, that's why I believe in responsibility and not this so-called toffee toffee love. You were showing on television, most people who got married and you will be showing love, love. Then immediately you separate. You start castigating that person as a demon. Castigate this person. You were the same people when you were in those denominations. You behaved as if that's the only church in the world. That's the, that the geo is the best human being in the world. Why would you suddenly turn and start castigating the man, castigating the system? Such people are quite unstable. Quite unstable. I don't like people who bring out, it's not that you should cover up sin. I don't like people who try to destroy those they are either related with or worked under or acted as uh, 
and the man is your mentor, then you try to destroy him. We won't take you seriously. And so, I want to appeal to our general overseers. Let's calm down. Let's review our practices and our systems. We cannot continue like this. Let's start raising men and women who love Christ, who see Christ, who have their faith focused on Christ, who live Christ and preach Christ instead of those who preach Dr. Poki, look like Dr. Poki, excuse me, dress like Dr. Poki and become um, replicas of Dr. Poki. We should be replicas of Christ, not of men. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I'm not seeking clout. I'm a successful and very popular human being. I am just stating the obvious. And I've said these things long time ago. The way we are running our big denominations, compelling people to, you must do this, you must do that, you must do that, do that, you must do this, you must do that. It is not too different from colonialism of the mind. And African Christians dare to think for yourselves read the scriptures for yourself and behave like the Berean Christian. God bless you. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles. Ah, Paul Key.